Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Swastik, how are you? I'm seeing your designs are doing very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So okay, so just give us a brief introduction about yourself. Huh. So it feels like a very uh, you know f- first round wala when you when a group interviews <laughs> for the first <laughs> round. I am Sadat. I. <laughs> huh. So um, I'm Siddharth. I've I've um, currently and currently an alumni. I wish I was not. Yeah. So I was in college uh, from 2014 to 2019. So yeah, I'm an I'm an alumni now. Although I wish I was not. And um, I was in this branch called as Integrated MSc Physics, which is a five-year course. Um, and uh, yeah, I college obviously is a uh, very like happening and. beautiful time for all 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 of us i am pretty sure most alumni i miss it um so do i and uh, yeah uh, college was fun because it it it, uh, it was very good for me in a way that it it made me realize what i wanted to do which is uh, somehow to become a chef um and uh, yeah i'm just very happy with uh, with whatever happened in college We are missing college too. Like I didn't thought I'll say this so soon that I want to go back to college and I'm missing college. But yeah. I'm missing a lot. Yeah. So okay. So uh, so you are in Hyderabad, right? Yeah. So what yeah, are you doing? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in Hyderabad now. It's been um yeah almost a year. Uh, I I came here because I I wanted to obviously uh, do something about my. career as a chef um so like uh right now i am working at a cafe it's called cafe rasa swada which is uh, somewhere in hyderabad it's located by a beautiful lake and um, it's 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 a new cafe it started just like 2 months back yeah so on paper i'm the uh, head chef of this cafe which means that i can i mean i get to uh, be creative and make my own menu and food which which is very good um but although like i i don't like calling myself a chef because i think like there's a lot a lot of work and hard, like time after which you should give yourself that title so like i don't like going by that and um, yeah so that's that's been the story uh, it's been uh, quite an quite an interesting year because uh, when i came to hyderabad i thought i would um be joining a culinary school here which is called as uh, culinary academy of india which is one of india's most famous and oldest uh, culinary schools but um, when i started to re- research about these about these institutes i r- realized that there is a lo- there's a lot of lacking in culinary schools in india there there's been no no updation in their curriculum since they've been started for example the school was started in 1996 and they've never changed their curriculum since 96 and um it 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 felt like it would be uh like probably it will suck up your passion that you have your creativity that that you have and uh, i like few chefs just said that maybe it will it will be good if you just um try interning at cafes if, if, even if it doesn't pay you initially you should you should try that which is what i did so since uh, the start of this year 2020 have been uh the start of the year went in interning at random cafes um i would go work uh from uh the late morning afternoon shift till till the evening uh for free i i, I wasn't paid for that and i would come back and i would uh, take some online classes in physics that was uh my only source of income for that time so this is what i was doing for around 2 months and after that i got an opportunity to run a food truck that was owned by someone else but they gave me the complete freedom to uh cook whatever i want and um like be creative with the menu which is what i wanted at that time and it was very close to home which was good so i would just walk there every day obviously the lockdown happened and um, i was very scared when the food truck reopened because it was just I think it was the first month of May or something. Uh, yeah, it was the first week of May where um the unlocking 1.0 happened. So I I would gear up, go every day and 
try not to get in physical contact with anyone um but yeah somehow now it's been 4 months since i've been going out every day and uh it's been a thrilling experience somehow that um, it's been very lucky to evade the virus and at the same time uh it's been a fantastic time to cook somehow because like a lot of people yes your food has food the vaccine maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, yeah so for three months uh, i was in that truck and um, just a month back i got this great uh, opportunity to be the head chef here and that's what's been happening since the last week so last month since the last month yeah. so 2020 has been very good for me i'm sorry everyone that did not want <laughs> has been really good to know that it was a good year for someone at least someone like right? Yeah. yeah so 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 was it always decided that you wanted to become a chef that you wanted to go, get into the field oh. of cooking yeah so um i always liked cooking um i mean um, uh during school days i think this was like around 7 standard my uh like my both my parents uh, work uh, they have a um like full day job so they were very busy uh, to basically uh, make a meal uh, for my school like my lunch box and my snack box uh, snack box and what not so i started to cook for myself um because i i was like someone who used to eat a lot like i was very very fat at that time uh, still am and um, they uh, basically they were fine with it because they like okay sadat is making a sandwich for himself good like how how far could that go <laughs> <laughs> so i would cook and i found a liking for it mostly because um most of my classmates and even my teacher who used to sometimes taste my food they would like um appreciate it uh, or at least that's what they told me and i i felt a very good positive feedback which i which i never felt for anything before like i mean, i didn't never got a positive feedback before that for anything and i was like this very introverted kid in school like I, i was the person who would sit on the last bench that no one knew about and suddenly people are all like so that sandwich is nice so that that was a nice feeling that um, yeah okay i'm i'm getting some uh fucks in life because of my sandwich <laughs> so yeah that that was the first instance where i was like yeah i like cooking and um, i remember very clearly in 11th and 12th where we we were studying for je um we had these last few months before the exam where we were at home giving mock exams on our own so to just i would get so stressed i would go to the kitchen now and then and just cook something and i i would end up spending more time than i should in the kitchen and it 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 was basically the happiest memories that i can recall just being in the kitchen like i if it's cooking on my own or with my mom or with my grandma uh it's just that the happiest memories that i remember uh were mostly in the kitchen so i knew somewhere back uh, of my mind that i am going to either start a cafe sometime maybe go to college um which i eventually did like when i was in first year of rurki i imagined that i would get a job like 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 everyone else did uh, in a software company or so on and work till i'm 30 or 40 and start a cafe after that so that was the plan in my first year i never uh, you know imagined that i would actually become uh, so inclined towards becoming a chef just after college or over so what happened in college is uh, pretty much i think which is happening to a lot of students right now i i did not know what i wanted to do i tried a lot of things here and there my core software or not and um, i did not like anything i i did not feel i was uh, a part of uh, or liked any of it and i knew that i had to cook i because again it was the happiest memory that i had so i was like why is there no cooking facility in campus why is this not a thing uh, in in a, in any co college of of india and uh, suddenly i met this friend uh, in my the end of my third year who told me that there are student run cafes outside it's like a thing in colleges in us and in singapore and what not and uh, you why don't you start this and that's what happened for the fourth and fifth year of my college most of my time went in starting culinary club uh, we had a lot of ideas 
uh, for that but mostly it was a cafe and luckily before i left uh, i was able to start this cafe um with uh, we had an amazing team uh, who were mostly in fourth and third year at that time and yeah we started this cafe and it's i mean i'm pretty sure you guys know about it now more than me because i've not been uh, affiliated with it for a year um yeah so because of those two years of culinary club and whatever experiences i had i was so dead sure that this is what i have to do i cannot stand anything else um and uh, yeah after college got over i knew i had to uh, do something about it um i came to hyderabad mostly because hyderabad compared to other cities compared to other metropolitans is a very unsaturated market when it comes to food like bombay is so saturated you have uh, every variety and, and 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 it's very good and there are very good chefs there uh, same with delhi same with bangalore uh, i don't really like chennai so i'm not going to go there but hyderabad was this one market where um it it has such a rich history of food the city and still it's so unsaturated so it was like the perfect place to start something because if if you want to make a name as a chef and if you want to uh, want a cafe to grow or your place to grow this is probably that city right now before it gets saturated in some years so yeah i i knew i had to come here and you had to and plus that culinary school was also in hyderabad so there were two two reasons why i came here and yeah now i'm over here this is this cafe so you also had a plan to open a cafe in in pondicherry right uh, so. yes yeah um that uh ha huh, so um pondicherry is basically my uh, it's it's actually the place where i was born it's my native place um and uh, uh it's obviously the place i i spent my first 6 years in pondicherry before my family shifted elsewhere uh, so my fondest memories obviously in my first memories were in pondicherry and the food over there is just amazing i i'm, I'm uh very um, influenced by what my grandmother cooks um and uh, her cooking is also very similar to what uh, is in japan so my current plan is to like uh, work for some years over here in hyderabad and go to japan if some good chef uh, agrees to uh, let me work uh, with him and i want to learn all their techniques because they have a rich no- a rich heritage and in depth knowledge of food which which most cultures don't and um, hopefully use those techniques uh, with like in- integrate that with my grandmom's kind of cooking and start something of my own in in uh, in uh, pondicherry so that's like the current plan for now in the end i i have a lot of um, so a lot of chefs want to go abroad and say, set up something in france or usa or something i i i understand that because it's very easy to uh, get a name over there because they appreciate art but i i want to stay back in india because i want india to start up, uh, start appreciating the art more firstly a lot of uh, a lot of indians don't take uh, cooking uh, to be an art form and um, our food culture is so rich and so vast it's probably the best in the world and we still like people still call france as the culinary king of the world which is which is fine but i think india deserves more than that so um i think there are already a lot of chefs who are doing something about it uh, in india who are very good and i also want to be one of those chefs who who's a, who who's, who's able to rethink of what indian cuisine could be and uh, is doing things which which is not thought about uh, for right. for indian cuisine and and it makes no sense to do that outside india so i do want to do that in in india eventually uh, i also read it in your article that you wrote about uh, saving uh, our grandmothers and our family's traditional recipes and i really love that uh, topic i mean i never thought about it and i'm i'm also thinking yeah. of asking my grandparents of the recipes and it's really really great that you thought of yeah the actually the first time when i when this uh, when this idea was spoken about was actually um my friend was saying that how the only cultural um identity that, that's left 
with people's families is actually their food because there's you there's nothing else that is actually passed on anymore like maybe yes some some ornamental values or some things like that is passed on but the real like like um identity that's left at the end of every generation is probably their food but this is the first time where i think in our generation that might die out because of the because of all the influence that's there um from uh western for food and what not which is which is not a bad thing it's it, it's good that we we've had uh, such a mix now in india but uh, the fact that so much of our uh knowledge and history in food is dying out with us that's uh, that was the main idea why i thought you know maybe if if uh, through culinary club we can encourage students to ask their grandparents about because they've all all obviously had their grandmother's food and for 95% of the people they will always be nostalgic about that like even if they have anything else they're always going to be nostalgic about their grandmother's food so why not try to rep, like like just preserve it like just know what what they're doing like mm-hmm. like yeah my nani makes this amazing bhindi ka sabzi but what goes in that <laughs> why is it so amazing so um like 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 for example my grandmother's cuisine is very very unique i've i've, I've never seen that in other families because she she preserves her spices uh, she sun dries a lot of spices for a week because pondicherry is so hot you can you can dry them easily and then she makes a paste or you can like you can call that a paste out of it which she uses for every curry and f- uh, fish fry and what not and it, it it just um it's like it's like an indian uh, umami for taste like you just got all these flavors that that are like just like kicking inside your mouth which is i mean in a good way so um and obviously like even even in hyderabad when i came here i've been to some of my friends grandmother's house who who have these traditional preparation of uh, millets uh, with um, uh, these herbs and leaves i've never never heard about in my life like for example i, I was shocked that there is this uh, leaf from the spinach family called as uh, gangura which is very common here like gangura mutton gravy gangura biryani pulao it's it's so common here but you i i'm not seen that anywhere else in india because i i think somehow we've all heard of biryani and we've heard so much about biryani but we've never heard about these things and it's so common here and so the ones you get in the hotels is like this and then you go to someone's house and the grandma makes something and it's not even like a preparation you would have thought of it's so simple it's got it's got ingredients that are you would not have thought that would go well with these things but it, it's so good um so there's so much history and he- heritage that if we if we don't start caring about it will be lost and um, for like for food enthusiasts like me obviously i would feel very sad uh, but mo- more so i think that's that one thing that is a good memory for every child of their like that they have of their grandmother which is their food so i think it's it should be a thing where you just preserve it where you remember how how it's done and what not so yeah so I like know. the main idea was basically that yeah so basically with i uh, was hoping that culinary club would um, make students write down their recipes and um, it could become a journal or a magazine or what not and the future st- students to come would read this and they would automatically be encouraged to ask their grandparents about their cuisine so it would become a cycle like that mm, yes and that's important like we should start doing it it's yeah so and uh, so so uh, like coming on to your college days again uh, like shifting from physics to the field of cooking is like a big is a big step i mean and a lot of factors uh, come into action like uh, there are there is there is a factor where i mean you'll have to uh, convince your parents and there is peer pressure 
and like so how did you how how was that time and how did you manage was at all yeah so um yeah that's a very uh, good and tough question <laughs> put together so <laughs> so um like uh, firstly i know that a lot of people including me uh, are very like the whole placement process even though it's very grueling and everything it is kind of kind of attractive because you know it's a very easy way to get a job and you are getting like a comfortable income for for a while so it is attractive and the fact that in my fifth year almost everyone i know is sitting in placements and trying to get a job and what not and they got one um was yeah it was like a very uh you know kind of like an attractive thing yeah okay uh, you know I, i should have i should but the thing is that i knew that if i would get a job i would probably at some point get comfortable in the job and be fine with the money that's coming be happy that i can buy things and what not so i had that idea always at the back of my mind that if i get too comfortable i will not um do anything to become a chef so um the one good thing about about iit is that it gives you a very good tag obviously it gives you a very good backup so if you want to try something else and you fail at it, fail at it for whatever reason you know that you can always get a decent job that is not i mean you're not going to end up at the street at the you know at the end of the day you're not uh, going to be without a job if uh, if you fail at your other field that you want to try so that's one good thing about college um and um regarding the peer pressure thing yeah so uh, l- like luckily we had a like a very different branch from other other branches because firstly we were like 12 students and uh because we had like known each other for 5 years we we knew each other like very very well secondly it was very um uh somehow it was very fortunate that all of us were trying to do something that we really wanted to do my one of my branch mates his name is neil um he wanted to always do music and um he is right now at a two school of music in bombay doing this bachelor's in music um so uh, the, you know the point is that um our branch was like because it was so small and we knew each other so well and we were luckily very passionate about the things we really wanted to do it was very easy uh, to stay in that bubble that we are there for each other and we will like um, encourage each other to do what we wanted so even when there were times where i was like uh, should i just sit for placement should i just get, get a job my friends always try to uh show the bigger picture that this is what could happen and this is not what you want to do so you know so that was a good thing ha- you know um having them around uh plus like i told you uh canary club the fact that i was able to start it and everything gave me that very big boost that i needed the last thing was the parents thing um which i have still not fixed to be honest my parents um like I've, they've known for 3 years now that uh that i wanted to cook but have never like got a grip uh <laughs> on that and um so uh i think i mean for most people who um i'm just like trying to tell this to the people who 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 are trying to do something else and their parents are not agreeing um the thing is that we all have a way with our parents and i think my way with my parents is probably i have not figured the correct way yet to try and make them accept it but also the thing that i'm doing is also a uh, very different from their thought process so it will take time for them to accept that so in the end w- what i keep telling myself is that i have to stick to the process of trying to become better and eventually hopefully they will understand sometime so um the one more thing is that like our parents are very quick at uh, trying to say that they, this is your alumni this is what they're doing they are in this job you should do the same so i don't have any alumni where i can show as an example that 
uh, he's a chef right now she's a she's a chef right now so hopefully it's like uh, in a way what i'm trying to say is that maybe if we do good like the new generation of alumni who are going into arts if they are doing good maybe the next generation of college students who want to do something else they have someone to showcase to their parents that look they wanted to do that they're doing that they're doing good so i i think it's all a matter of time and this is like a slow uh, kind of like an evolutionary process of things happening right now but yeah i mean i don't know personally any engineer or student from from iit who is a chef so uh, hopefully if someone else wants to become one in the in the coming years and i'm doing good hopefully i would i i'll hope that you know they can convince their parents more easily than for me <laughs> so yeah that yeah it's yeah hopefully it will get easier uh as as the days pass by people people will be able to convince their parents easy easy yeah i thought there was some trick or something <laughs> no. i i need to- <laughs> Eh no there's no trick I, i mean if 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 you're very uh, if if you're the kind of person who can get the fake tears and like convince your friends to do that do that because i can't i whenever i've spoken to them about it i've always said in a very like l- like a logical stern voice which they've not been able to grip so i am not able to get that emotional no maybe i should but i'm i'm not able to so uh, maybe you guys can try that out and <laughs> let me know if it works <laughs> yeah um okay so so do you feel yeah i mean does it bother you uh now yeah. does it bother mm-hmm. you now all these things the, i mean yeah all these things so the thing is that um for me because uh, i i've i've wanted to do this for such a long time and i'm finally doing it for now it's not bothering because like right now i'm just so happy that i'm able to finally do this i uh, i mean obviously i'll uh, agree with the fact that whenever my parents and i talk and we talk about this it it obviously will bother that uh, like like just for example they keep whatsapping me um if there's any job offer <laughs> or any uh ad of cat uh, uh, the cat um, exam uh, thing that happens in november for mba they they just like send me a picture that if you please uh, um enroll yourself and what not and all but um yeah i mean it, it's it's again you you have to think about the the bigger picture and at the end of the day they are your parents they they want you to do good it's just that for now their do good thought is skewed towards what society things which is a good paying corporate job so it's just a matter of time where even their their thought will hopefully uh, kind of match ours hope you know maybe with time and if they also start meeting other people who uh, have a similar story where they were doing xyz field and they went into arts it it will all always help so it's just a matter of uh, i think for these these things to get better um so tell us your best best memories of college i would like i know there must be something you like all of the five years uh any uh, best memories or funny memories um <laughs> i mean it's been such a long time and uh, i think i mean if you ask most seniors they would definitely remember their first year because it was such a different time coming from a uh, coaching institute and suddenly in this environment which is so different so i mean i remember a lot about my first year like uh, like very few funny instances where like me and the people in the same block uh, have gotten like shit face drunk and doing random things on the slope of the library or uh in uh, uh, in lbs ground and what not uh and like of course there were yearly trips um uh like obviously in gg there there were trips every year which is something which everyone looks forward to um and with that uh, comes uh, mafia 
which is also someone something we all look forward to uh most of my memories however that i can remember now are uh, just to do with fifth year because that that was uh, the most memorable year for me um because of culinary club so most of my happy memories that i remember right that i can like remember on the spot right now in this podcast is for that um like um every group has uh, um, a chapo and every group's chapo is kind of different you either do this or that you go here or that this so we were a very small group when uh, because it was the first year of our group and um, our cafe was big enough to incorporate all of us so i remember there were some chapos where uh, people are getting gaddas they're just getting beds in they're laying it on the floor of the cafe and um, we like somehow everyone used to drink i, I was like surprised that even our first years were like yeah full on like into it <laughs> so i i was in charge of the of the of the cocktails um oh yeah i can actually share a share a recipe here. so for people who wanted to know what uh a lot of people i remember came during the during the convocation a lot of people came to drink this one drink that i made so uh, i can just like blurt that recipe out <laughs> that, how please that recipe yeah it's, so that's uh, basically a, a mix of uh, white rum white wine cranberry juice um grape grape juice cinnamon powder mint a little sugar and salt that was the drink with some water to dilute it as much as required so yeah so like these drinks people would drink it like juice and i, I mean there were so many funny instances there there just so much dancing that happened inside the cafe there was so much crying that happened inside the cafe because obviously after a time people get senti about things and um, it was just a lot of fun and there were such different people because like this was that one group where we we had bachelor's students and master's students and a few phd students then it was so diff- like it was it was a lot of fun that so many people have come together and such different personalities all of them very very interesting and like having a gala of a time so i i fondly remember all of those i remember during during convocation um uh, the same similar party ha- happened inside the cafe and i sadly passed out very quickly and when i woke up there was a bucket on fire there was literally a bucket um that was in flames and i i i asked the stu- the people who were there there were a few s- second year students like, why is this on fire like aren't you all of what's happening and uh, they were like um, we wanted to go camping we wanted to go to rishikesh we wanted a bonfire so we we just did this <laughs> and i mean there's nothing to say to that you just poured you just poured all the leftover alcohol inside a bucket and set on fire cool yeah what <laughs> so like all these uh things to do with uh, kalani club are obviously yeah, because like i said like i i was a person who was very lost for the first 3 years of my college but i think because of the club i felt very very happy by the time i left out of college so obviously my happiest memories are are those um and i think as you also go along with this alumni podcast you will see that everyone's happiest memories were only when they were not so good <laughs> <laughs> so and any tips for juniors for your juniors any tips ha huh. um yeah so um no so uh i mean most uh, students um are going to get a lot of tips from their alumni because alumni is love doing that um my my only thing is that like uh, there are like i think like three kinds of people in campus if if you just try to really like categorize it to just like three one who find comfort and um some kind of like uh have i won't say happiness but some kind of uh, like um, intent to do uh, what is their core branch or whatever the placements come for which is coding and um, they are happy with that so 
like either they ended up in a group like SDS, SDS or um, IMG or PAG, liked it and knew that they wanted to get into a good paying job or just code. So th that is a that is a good process in a way. It's because it's very easy because you are in a college that is known for that and you're going to get a job that is for that and you found your comfort and um, like a positive intent over the good for you. That's an easier way. A uh, second uh, kind of people are the ones who are kind of lost, but they know um, a little bit about what they want to do. Um, for example, that was me. So I knew I, want, I wanted to cook, but there's nothing for that. So what I want to say about that is uh, I feel a lot of people in college uh, ended up just cribbing that oh, I wish this was there, I wish this was there, but they did not do anything about that. And I was also one of them. I used to crib a lot that I want to cook, I want to cook, but I can't cook. So it, it's just up to you if you want to do that or not. Because if, if um, I could start a cafe out of nowhere, which was not even like thought of at all in any college here, and I could do that by the time I left. I'm pretty sure you could also do something about what you like. And by the time you leave college, you, you can have some substantial idea about what you want to do with that uh, passion or liking that you have for that field. And the last kind of people are the ones who are completely lost. They don't know what they want to do. They don't even like anything or they like everything but in moderation in some levels. So for them, if by the end of the fourth year, by, by the end of third year, if they still don't know what they want to do, sit for placements, get a job, and don't get too comfortable with the job. Continuously try to figure out what you what you really want. It's, it's, just a, it's just a matter. It's just a process in the end. You try something, you liked it, give it enough time. Don't run out of patience. But figure out what you don't want first. Eliminate, eliminate it. And then you eventually have this sample space which you like and hopefully you can narrow it down to something but don't wait too long because like like i mean this is something which makes sense right you don't want to wait till you're 30 and suddenly figure out this, this is what i want to do because then it's it's too late because i mean we say it's never too late but depending on your family if they have health issues or whatnot it it could get too late so um that's the thing so I mean, if you fall in the first category of people, your life is just good. Like, just, you know. <laughs> but if you're like one of us, one of me, I mean, it, it's a bit tough, but you'll get there. You'll get there eventually. It was, it was a great advice. Like, all of us are lost, especially like uh, second and third year students are, are, are lost, and especially in this pandemic. It's getting really yeah. difficult for us. And, I think most uh, people are worried also about the job scenario now. Yeah. yeah, they are. They are like, everybody is working really hard. Uh, so it's like, like these advices work a lot for us to know that we'll, we'll, we'll be okay someday. Everything will be all right. So yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another quick five minutes cooking tip you want to give us I, uh, so a lot of people were uh, telling me uh, if there was an easier way to make chapatis and rotis because i think a lot of my friends are lazy about needing the dough or they just find it very time consuming or uh, probably they're not getting it right so um one thing is that the way people make pancakes they just use an egg with some flour and milk and so on. You can use the same technique for making something that is very similar to a roti and goes very well with dal and sabzi, which is just, um, for example, if you want to make a roti, just take an egg, a little water, some salt, a, some spices of your choice, like a lot of people like um, ajwain for their rotis. And you can go with around three fourth cups of flour, mix it, you get like a thick batter and you can put that batter on a pan with some oil or butter just like a pan just like you would do for a pancake and that could be used for having it with your dal or sabzi and instead of atta you can try out different things you can try out ground oats ground oats with peanuts ground millets ground jowar any grain of sorts and you can try out different kind of uh, 
pseudo rotis and to have it with dal and sabzi so I, this is like very easy it, it, it takes like under 5 minutes i remember my f- my flatmate was was just amazed with this he was like sure like this is so easy let's just why why do we waste so much time making rotis i mean our parents won't like it because you know but oh, yeah. uh, we are jugaad people we don't mind all, <laughs> all this so <laughs> Yeah. It will be useful for us once we once we move, uh, once we start living alone, and we'll have to cook on ourselves. Alone, yeah. Yeah. So yes, it it was it was great talking to you. Thank you for the tip and thank you for the advice too. It was a great podcast to have you on our podcast. So thank you. <laughs> Please follow Swastik on Instagram. Our <laughs> artwork is very good. <laughs> you won't admit it, but it is. Oh, uh, bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. bye.